This is a lecture on hypertext markup language and how to use it to develop web pages. We're going to introduce the basic concept for the World Wide Web and also introduce some basic tags for the hypertext markup language and describe how you may actually post your web pages to a web server for the general public to see. Um, later we're going to have some other lectures on hypertext link, how to incorporate image and create image link in your web page, how to use table to format your HTML document, and how to create HTML forms to develop interactive applications. Uh, Laura Lima's book is a pretty decent one um, and this is already in six editions. And there are some additional online resources including a tutorial uh, from the W3 Schools website and there's some document um, from the second website. You should check the uh, CSU Channel Islands website which has the uh, additional information in terms of publishing your web pages to the student web space. If you're using Dreamweaver or front page, there are some additional information regarding web publishing. Additional tutorial can be found here. Uh, this is a general architecture for the World Wide Web. Um, basically, it's a client-server architecture. The browser is the client, the web server is the server site. And the browser, to some extent, it's what we usually call it a thin client. And that's one of the several benefits for using the web as a delivery mechanism for t uh, building online applications. Uh, we call it thin client because the web browser doesn't have to be very powerful, therefore, we can use. Um, hardware such as um, iPad, um, notebook, or even smartphone to um, to get online and and use some of the web application online. And since browser is widely available on different platforms, so um, so basically web as a platforms um, it is basically platform independent. Um, the, the, on the client side, it can be running Windows, Mac, smartphone, you name it. And as long as you have a browser, uh, you can get access to online applications across the web. And since the application, most of this functionality is running on the web server side, so it's very easy for you to upgrade your application by simply just upgrading the version of the application uh, on the server side. Um, in, instead of traditional client-server application, you actually need to install some client pieces of software on the client machine, and which can be very challenging. And the, the World Wide Web is really based on a set of standards. Um, on the network side, uh, the TCP IP is the internet communication protocol standard that everybody use um, who run t uh, the internet infrastructures. For the World Wide Web, there's additional um, communication structure um, protocol called HTTP um, that is used to support the World Wide Web applications. And we'll explain HTTP later. So um, it is important that you understand the benefit of using web as a delivery mechanism. Um, first, once again, it's a thin client, like a browser, and it's platform independent. Uh, the browser can run on multiple platforms. It's very easy to install your upgrade, uh, in this case, mostly on the web server. And it's based on standard, including HTTP, TCP IP, and certainly HTML, which is a documentation standard that we would discuss in detail. Uh, let's look at 
a little bit of internet uh, network infrastructure. Um, in, nobody really owns the internet, but everybody seems to own a piece of it. Uh, let's look at from here. For instance, um, you you could have a local area network, um, and for the computers hook up to the local area network to get on the internet, you pretty much need to have a connection through your internet service provider and your internet service provider could be a telephone company, could be a cable company or specialized internet service providers and they would um, provide the bandwidth and the connection for you to connect your network onto the internet infrastructure and your ISP may own part of the internet infrastructure and then uh, they need to actually uh, connect it to other part of the internet. The connection among computers on the internet um, are usually going through something called router. So different network when they need to connect to each other by exchanging information they usually use something a specialized computer called router to route your messages across the internet Cisco as an example is a company well known for its router product for the router to route your t route messages across the internet uh, each message is formatted as an internet protocol datagram and in the datagram they we usually have um, an IP address indicating who is sending the message and an IP address indicating who will be the receiver of the message so every computer hooked up to the internet will have a specific IP address um, there are about 4.3 billion IP address available. Uh, we're pretty much running out of the IP address uh, currently. And American Registry for Internet Number is the authority responsible for assigning IP addresses. However, the IP address is very difficult for human beings to remember. So there's a mapping between the 32 bits IP address um, to a so-called domain name. Um, the for example, uh, let's use Channel Islands uh, as example. Um, <coughs> the CSUCI um, has a domain name, which is um, basically the CSUCI dot edu. The edu is the so-called top domain name and when you register a domain name you basically will register um, a domain name like CSUCI and you have to choose a top domain name. EDU is for educational institution you have to be a legitimate educational institution for you to register EDU top domain name and some popular domain name, uh, top domain name will be .com for commercial, .org for nonprofit, .gov for government, um, .net for network service provider. Uh, you can go to godaddy.com or other uh, domain name registration site to register domain names such as .com, .org, .net or some top country domain names such as .uk for United Kingdom, .cn for China. You cannot register .edu or .gov unless your educational institution or government agency. The web pages or any online resource that we develop eventually will have um, a so-called universal resource locator which is a unique address pointing to your web addresses. This is the format for URL. Um, the HTTP is the communication protocol and 
let's say AITC.com, that's the domain name that you may have registered. Uh, the port numbers for communication uh, port uh, 80 is the default. So if you web server set up using the port 80, you don't have to specify it. Then we may point into some subdirectory. Um, in a particular folder, um, you can specify the file name. If you use the default file name as your web page file name, then you don't have to tell other people your URL with the file name. You can pretty much just tell them this portion of your URL without the file name when you use the so-called default file name. Your uh, web server administrator will tell you what are the default file name that can be used for your particular server. The key element for the web is first the hypertext, which is nonlinear, so we can link to other pieces of information on the web. And we also rely on URL, which is Uniform Resource Locator, to specify online resources. And although we call it hypertext, the, the web is really a hypermedia environment, which you can use graphics, sounds, video, etc., along with a web page. And since we're building on top of the internet, uh, that instantly give us a global reach and and also universal access by various devices which has browsers. The communication protocol to support the World Wide Web is HTTP that is built on top of TCP IP. As we have mentioned previously, HTTP is a client-server model. The web client is the browser and sometimes the browser side you can have some plugin to view some additional document. And on the server side usually we have static document and to create dynamic web pages we need to use programs uh, such as JavaScript, um, ASP.NET and that allowed us to connect to the database and to build uh, online applications. When the client make a request through a URL address to the web server, the web server will basically return the requested document or run the server-side application, generate an HTML document on the fly, and then return it to the client. Once the document has been returned, the connections uh, between the client and server will be closed. And this make the client server, this client server model make the, uh, the web environment very efficient because um, the server doesn't have to maintain the connection with the client once the document has been um, has been rendered or sent to the client. The HTT protocol stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is running on top of TCP IP and it also specify a addressing scheme which is URL and you can also extend the document type that can be returned through HTTP through something we call it uh, MIME header, M-I-M-E header. HTTP is a stateless protocol, which means there's no memory between client connections. Uh, the system will not maintain the states of a user's visit. The only way we can the, the one popular way, not the only way, that we can intend um, users' visits and prior visit is through cookie. So cookies, uh, the web cookie are used to track users uh, across multiple visits of a website, of a particular website. HTTP is very efficient, it is very portable, and there's also a secure HTTP uh, protocol and when you see the web address HTTPS that means we're using a secure HTTP. 
the different role people play in the web environment. Uh, you could be just a user using the browser to um, visit various websites. You can be a web designer, author, publisher, uh, publishing um, static content to the web. And to create dynamic application, you pretty much need to be a programmer, to be a web programmer, which use server-side scripting languages to write program. The webmaster is the one who managing the web servers um, for us. This is example of an HTML page. Um, it's a markup language. The angle bracket enclosed the markup tag, like HTML. And this is example of um, the rendering of this HTML document through the web browser. So this concludes this lecture, and we're going to continue later with basic HTML markup.